Yo, what is up guys? It's Sangat here and today we're gonna spend 10 minutes on becoming the best Diana possible. I guarantee you that after watching this video, you are definitely going to be performing better on the champion. I will teach you combos, secrets on Diana that 99% of the players don't even know, even pro players. And if you're interested in getting coached by me, make sure to check my Discord server in the description down below and DM me directly to get started. Let's get right into the video, guys. Let's talk about Diana. R then flash lets you pull more enemies. Use your R on as many champions as possible. You can use an opponent to start your combo on the backline, following with R then flash. Sometimes, when you're using Q and then ER, you ult in place because of a weird interaction. That's because you did the combo too fast. I'll explain how you should be doing it with 100% accuracy. You can use Q, E, R. You can use Q, E, R. You can Q, E, R. Or you can do Q, E, R fast. Now let's talk about passive Moon Silver Blade. If you're playing mid lane Diana, it's a good idea to auto attack a minion twice and then use your third auto attack to trade enemy champion. You could also flash to proc the passive, not very useful but good to know. Your passive icon will show a timer for when it expires. You could reset your passive when the timer ends after 1 second. You'll know when you have your empowered passive when Diana's blade shines. Your passive procs 3 times on each jungle camps. Your passive also procs on towers, the damage is significant enough to almost one shot them with some AP. All in all, you do a lot of damage to turrets at all stages of the game. Tier 2 side turrets are worth 700 gold, so you should focus these. It's important to note that you can't proc your passive damage on inhibitor in Nexus if you're too far away from them. Get as close as possible from them to proc your passive. Now let's talk about Diana's Q, one of the most unique non-directional ability in League. No matter how you throw it, it will always be thrown from the right hand side. Hitting someone with your Q will generate a mark on them and it will provide vision. It's a hit and miss ability, but the actual range of the Q consistently doesn't match the skill indicator. You can see it here. The position of the skill indicator is actually different from the actual hit position of the Q. The funny part is that your cursor positioning actually matters, as it extends the maximum duration of the Q. Here's my Q indicator, it goes as far as here. So I can Q this dummy, no problem. But here comes the outrageous part of the queue. I'm going to pull the cursor further away to the upper right corner. The indicator is also pulled out a bit. Guess where I can hit my queue? This is a really simple mechanic that you can master on Diana. And a lot of player Diana players use the line of the queue to hit targets as opposed to a point of arrival of the queue. Well, there's a reason for that. When you hit a target with the point of arrival, here's your range. When you lean in a little bit and throw it diagonally, it will hit all targets. It's more tolerant. Except in this example where you need to have your cursor further away to hit a target that's farther. So you really have to edge this mechanic in your head. Q only provides vision of the enemy hit. If there are other people near him, you can't see them. You can flash with Q. You can also flash Q on the side to extend your Q. I'll explain why that is. Imagine that your Q extends when you pull out your curve further away. The flash makes it so that your Q range extends. Hence why you need to flash towards the extension of this arc, and that's how you can pull out a far Q. You won't really use that in your games, but it's good to know. You can also R Q. It's useful if you want to mark your target while doing damage with your R. Now let's talk about the W ability. It's a shield with damage, it can be a game changer in a lot of scenarios, and you shouldn't be scared to fight when it's up. It's important to note that the balls explode in place where it hits the enemy. A lot of players like to use the W ability as an opener, however your W balls may explode on other targets, therefore it's incomplete damage. After pressing the W ability, the shield and balls will last up to 5 seconds, however the new shield can be stacked with the previous one and will refresh for a duration of 5 seconds. This basically means that we make the shield last a longer time. Great against poke champions. Unfortunately, the W goes in cooldown when the balls explode, however you can shorter the cooldown of the W in disguise with this method. Now let's talk about Diana's E. 
If a target is marked and you use that on a target, the E will refresh and we can do a lot of cool tricks with that. But once there is no target with E marks, the E will go on cooldown, I call it E break. The CD of E is very considerable, so if it's not necessary to kill someone, try to avoid breaking your E, otherwise you'll be fairly useless. Let's stand in the middle of this rock here. Take a look at the range of my flash. The furthest point is the middle of the stone right here. Put a dummy here. Dino will stop right in front of the dummy, but if you put a dummy within the range, your E will go behind the dummy. Take a look at the ranges in comparison. Different lighting points are based on the range of your flash. Use this trick to move behind your opponents in sticky situations or to dodge a spell. If your target is outside of the range of your E, you can E then flash and get closer. It will automatically E on the target giving your opponent no time to react. Your E will get refreshed upon pressing the ability, even if you get interrupted. When you E, you can use other abilities, EQ, EW, ER, everything works. So when it comes to your E, we have to talk about combos. There's a basic combo on Diana which is Q then E, you don't have to wait for your target to be marked. Your E will still get refreshed. If your target is a minion, it's important to know that if your target dies with your Q then your E, it will go on cooldown, as shown as in this example here. The advantage of this combo is that it's fast and easy to perform. You can use this combo to move quickly. The drawback is that you can break your E if your Q goes on cooldown. But don't worry, the maximum distance of Q is farther than E if you can directly overflow with Q and E. Your Q farther than E will basically also hit if your opponent is running away from you unless he's really out of range. It's basically the best combo in most cases. As mentioned earlier, auto attack twice then QE auto, attack for the passive proc. Usually your opponent run away from you when they see your blade shine. What you could do is auto attack a minion once, then QE, and auto attack twice to proc your passive and pretend that you're autoing a minion. Go for your Q, and then when your mark is about to expire, go in, check when your Q mark is about to disappear so you don't miss the timing. Your Q will go on cooldown, so you can just pretend to run away, and then QE once again, Now, you might ask me, hey Sun God, what if I miss my Q but my opponent runs away when I hit it? Now, this is when you have to use movement psychology in your favor. Pretend to step back and trick your opponent to turning back, proceed to turn back immediately. If you're playing against a human, it will take him over a few tenths of a second to react. You can use that timing to do your combo since you'll get a lot closer very quickly. In most cases, the distance is enough to kill your opponent or at least get a trade off. You can use this little trick to pull opponent closer to you whether they're ranged or melee. In melee combat, there's this little trick you can do with Dyna. You can Q on your target and then immediately walk away for a free trade. Here, let me teach you another kill angle. As long as Diana still has her E up, then every other Q and E has a chance to kill your opponent afterwards. The wave is pushing into me, I Q and E and auto attack, dodge your charm, then back off. Ari procs her electrocute and does 113 damage. I don't have any magic resist here. You use your W to block the damage, and while my shields are still there, same story, Q and E. My grass does 123 damage, more than electrocute. Walk away, and E, auto attack, and then R. You can also use one Q for four E's. The way you do this is to proc your Q on 3 targets and finally use your E on the last target without a mark. Touch 3 targets with your Q, E on the first, second, and then third, and finally use your E on the last target. You probably won't really do this ever in your games, but it's good to know. You can also E into Q, although it's not very consistent. I only recommend doing this combo if you really have no other choice, like in this example. It can also catch up your opponent by surprise, looks cool. There's a pretty cool R mechanic. You can use R on someone and proc the R on other targets. Use R on one target and EQW another. If your opponent can't react, they're dead. An important thing to consider is that a lot of targets will try to flash out of your R. In this case, you can R and then QEW. And finally use E to stick onto them and it will guarantee that you can proc the second segment of the R. Like I mentioned earlier, RQ can be used in close combat, but if your opponent is too far away, then you can flash. 
As long as your target is within the distance of E, it can be flushed. Then use E to ensure the hit of the second segment of your R. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to check the description down below for coaching. Peace.